Yeah, we are. We are rolling. Wayne, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Guy. It's nice to be here, mate. Uh, Long time listener. So to be able to jump on here and have a bit of a chat to you, I'm really looking forward to it. Where it goes, that's going to be the interesting part. <laughs> Look, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you and I deeply appreciate it. Um, I, I can after been doing podcasting now for, I think, 10 years, almost 10 years at the end of this year through two different podcasts. Um, you know, it can it can feel a bit of uh, an unusual experience to be on the other side. Even when I jump on interviews um, now and then, I'm like, oh, I, I don't feel as in control anymore. You know, I'm, I'm giving my giving it over to someone else. <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, so thank you, and because obviously I've gotten to know you over time and um, seen you on your own journey and how you've embraced this work and applied it in your life. So. I was excited um, to try and get you on, um, which you you uh, happily agreed. So again, thanks for being here. Yes, no worries. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> so I have to ask you um, because you're a builder, and you know I, I I started life as a plumber apprentice in Wales as well, and I'm always fascinated. Um, by one's journeys, and I think that helps the listeners to relate to this um, as well or try and make it more relatable. How does a builder end up looking at one's heart, one's emotions, meditation, and come into a live and flow retreat and basically diving down the rabbit hole? Like, where did it start for you, Wayne? Um, look, uh, this journey, I'm pr- probably better off starting at this journey and then having a bit of a chat about um where it come from, I suppose. Once I've started work doing this work, a lot of realizations come that you you just don't pick up through your childhood and so forth. That you you go, oh geez, that I remember that yeah. happening back then, but you don't give it any time because it's it's not something that's spoken about, or you just don't visit it. So I'll start this journey. That's probably the best bet, um, and then I'll just touch on that if um, we come back to it if we get there. So I, I suppose the big thing for me was um, a few years back um, of just a bit of background. So I've run, I'm an electrician by trade, um, come out of my time and went straight into business, um, my own business in partnership. Um, I went through that, that went south um, with a particular guy because we had a, a different value set. Um, and then I started my own business from then. So I've always had my own businesses. Um, I grew that that electrical business. Um, and as that journey went on, um, through having our, our, our beautiful girls, um, it it sort of leads you, leads you to a point where I started asking questions and I was like, is this what I really want to be doing? Um, and it wasn't from a conscious, a real conscious point of view. I just asked myself, is it what I really want to be doing? It was at the precipice of actually going to something quite big and I had to make a decision. Do I want to really um, drop a lot of energy into this or do I want to go into something that that, that really resonates with me? So at that point, uh, I was working with one of my mates. Um, well, it was late. It was just before Christmas. We weren't with our families. We were out on a job site um, late at night and, and, yeah, we just said we've had enough. Let's have a chat when we come back from Christmas and, and see what happens. So we... We stepped into a building company. At that time, it wasn't going to be a building company. It was going to be development, but it just evolved um, and it became a, an eco building company. So that's just sort of a bit of background. Um, then when you step into a, a whole new thing that's not what you do, um, there's a whole level of having to build that business um, and a lot of hours and a lot of work and a lot of stress and everything else that goes with it. Um, so fast forward probably about six, seven years, um, the business was going well. Um, I was highly stressed. Um, There's a lot of pressure on, on home with just the amount of hours and everything that you have to put in. And it just happened, I went on a surf trip with that, that mate that I'm in business with, but a whole heap of other mates that um, I've grown up with. And we were in Fiji out in the islands um, for, for nine days, I think it was in a bunk room, sharing bunks like, like kids again at school camp, um, which was, look, it was a really good, I really love the Fiji Islands. I've got a real connection there. I'm not sure what it is, but the energy, um, as soon as I get off the mainland and head out to the islands where the surf is, it's, um, it's just next level. And it's a, a connection that I'll, I'll dig deeper into as I, as I go through this work. 
but yeah, I was out there. Um, we had the week. You really get to get in touch with everything. There's no phones. There's you know, like you just you're just there, so you're present. Um, last day, just before we we're leaving, I took off on a wave. Um, the the leg rope wrapped around my leg. Nothing major. It was just it always happens, and it pulled right down on my calf. Um, I thought nothing of it. Got on, went and packed the bags, went and sat on the the jetty waiting for our our boat driver Jonah to come and pick us up and take us out back to the mainland and to the airport. And um, I looked down and I had this bulging lump between my shin bone and my calf. And uh, and this this whole story is when I think back now that I've done the work, now it makes sense to me. So I'm I'm saying this as if I. I this I knew what was going on at the time, but I didn't. I had no idea. So I sort of looked at it. How long ago was this, Wayne? 2018, June 2018. So, okay. geez, it'd almost be to the day um, that we're over there. Actually, hmm. it'd be interesting to check that because it's probably to the day today. Um, but anyway, it's... Uh, Fuck. Yeah, so <laughs> when I look down at it, I'm, I'm thinking what's this lump, you know, is as the leg rope somehow bust the blood vessel in there, I'm about to get on a plane. What do I do here? Do, you know, I don't want to go into Fiji and muck around and was sort of just sitting there and you're in the present. And at that point I just went, well, it is what it is. And I got on the boat and as to, to go home. But what I understand now I actually did in that moment was complete surrender. So as we start going and as we've been through the work with you guy, you start realizing that that complete surrender opens up doors that you just don't know existed. So, and, and I still remember the boat journey. It's, it's so crystal clear, you know, like it was beautiful, the flat, flat water with your mates. It was so good. A bee in the middle of the ocean, a bee landed on me and stung me on the chest. Um, that in itself has some sort of significance to me. Um, that poor bee had to die, but who knows what that sting was and, and what would it, what it was all about, but it has some significance. And then I got to the airport and I just Googled spiritual books, random. Like, no, I'd wow. never Googled it before, never had any sort of inkling to do that. And a book come up and it was Michael Singer, um, The Surrender Experiment, and um, on Booktopia and I ordered it at the Fiji airport. So and I come back, didn't really think much of it. I, I felt a bit odd of, of the experience. I'm like, well, what is this? And then that book turned up and when, as soon as I picked that book up, the journey began, you know. So, and that's, I, I've spoken to you guy when I put that, the secrets of Aboriginal healing across to you. And, um, you know, it's, I spoke to you about uh, the book. You don't choose the book. The book chooses you. I'm a big believer in that. And if I pick mm. a book up that I've chosen, I generally find it hard to read. But when the book chooses you, it's at the right time in your journey to actually give you the information that you need and, and can work through. So I read that book and then that just, like as I started reading that and his journey, when he started talking about the way, the, the way he meditated and what it was doing for him, I, yep. I just started doing it. No music, nothing, just sitting on the back deck and, and wow. so, um, so, um, and just sat there, you know, and, and look, to be honest with you, those, those once, once it started working and his book sort of gave me the recipe because he just sat there until something happened, you know, so I did the same and, um, something definitely did happen. You know, so I started having the journey inside myself and it was what you start coming up with, you, you don't even know it's there, you know. So, um, and, yeah, I just opened up. A, uh, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible, mate, because I, the it's it's almost like, like as I've gotten to know you, you know, you, you seem to, you, you, you've got this, presence about you that you take everything in your stride right mm. and um you know you're always um yeah like you you embody every, you embody it which is what it's all about right you know we can intellectualize it we can talk about it all day but unless we live it 
what's the point? Mm. And you, to me, what, what you just said is like a perfect um, transition of taking it in your stride to go, oh, right, well, maybe I should just go and do this. Where I see other, especially men, kicking and screaming, even coming even close near to this work, it's like a, like a, almost like a hot plate or something. And the closer they get to it, the more they think they're going to get scolded <laughs> from it and never to return. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where like, but only, only if you knew it's like the world's greatest gift secret that nobody knows about, which I find intriguing. So I'm, I'm interested to know what happened from there because it's almost like you, you continue to surrender mm. into this work. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, it was um, once I had to sit with myself and, and really go deep, it opens up things that, that you know, you, you, I suppose at that point I had the choice to actually step through the door or just push it back down. And that's as you just spoke about then, that's what a lot of men do and women. Like it's it's everyone. It's They go back to the comfort and it's easier just to push it down and, and ignore it um, instead of it feeling the tug and go, okay, what is that? You know, so, and I was at a point and, and it took, I think it was oh, probably close to three years before I actually came to your retreat, you know, like I was coming, I was coming, but it, it just didn't work and I just didn't get there, but I kept doing the work. So I'd get up every morning and I'd do my meditation. I, I was reading books, Deepak Chopra, Joe Dispenza, David G is a good one that I read, you know, just, all different books that sort of went with that. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, mm. it's doing the work. It's, it's actually sitting down and, and when that something comes up and it will come up instead of pushing it back down or, or saying, I don't know what that is. It's, you've got to let it come through and you've got to feel it with every part of your body and your spirit, you know, and your mind, oh, sorry. And your soul. Yeah. So, Absolutely. How did you end up at my workshop then? My one day I run in Burley because that I, I believe that was before. It was before I was working with Matt and Petra. I can't. It remember. was. I think it might have only been. Your, it was. Before, it might have been it? only your second one, as when you had let it in, um, and that that's the same synchronicities. And and once that that door was open, um, my neighbour. I, I was I was reading the book, and my neighbour just said, "Ah, oh, you know," and and. He's, he's never meditated before, I think, before he actually came to your workshop and he had a m massive experience. Um, yeah, yeah and, you know, it's I'm talking to him and he goes, this, you should have seen what this was. And at that point, I'd started, I'd probably done enough meditation that I was starting to go, right, now I need a community, I need to share this, I need to feel like the people around me are also doing it because it, it gets lonely when you're doing it on your yeah. own. Um, so that's what, and when he said you had that, I went, okay, well, let's go. And I, I think I, um, I, my, my whole family came to that one. My, my two older girls, Hannah, yeah. Hannah and Mia and, and my beautiful wife, Simone. Um, and we all came to that one. And, and then I, I signed up for the Let It In Academy at that point, which was the one you were running online and did your four week challenge and, and yeah. just the meditations that you guys were doing while I was still doing my stuff. I was just dropping into those so I could actually feel the group connection and the group group energy like the the the, the group energy is insane isn't it that that heart coherence when you get when you get to that point it's it's a totally different feeling but yeah so that's that's where how I ended up there Absolutely. and then obviously it just evolved into when you started living flow so yeah yeah how do you describe your journey? If do do you get people like because obviously you know you have your own ecosystem, you have your family, you have all your staff. Your your, I mean, how many staff do you have, Wayne? Uh, across the uh, two companies, twenty eight, I think. Yeah, around that. Right, you know that. that wow, that's a lot of influence, and, mm. and you know, and you're in there. Do do people in your circles start coming to you and say are you doing anything different what's the stuff you're doing or um, do they just leave you alone or like how does and if they ask what it is you, you're doing or how do you just how would you describe it to someone else? um i don't always find it easy to articulate it that's the thing like that's it's you know there's so many layers that 
this you go through with this work that um, it's not always easy but I do find that certain people are drawn to you they you, and again it comes back to that listening and you can feel it you can feel it when they want to have yeah. a conversation um, and you can open that door and that the whole thing about holding space um, they w- may not want to talk about it right there and then but if you hold the space for them and just let them let them be um, if they want to bring it up they'll bring it up if if they don't then yeah that's you've been able to hold space there for them for that period of time but um, through through yeah some of the team of I've, I've, I've had some good conversations with um, where we got Thursday mornings there's a couple of the team that I do a meditation with before we start work um, but yeah it's a I think you definitely do see it um, after we I came and did the retreat last year I felt like the universe was imploding um, when I came back so we, we lost two staff in one day yeah. another staff member so so many staff members left and not not for major reasons or anything but it was it was almost like there was a, to- a different frequency um and and they they were moving into their space and and an opening was being created for new uh, new frequency and a new um, energy to come into the business and um yeah and, and it did and and that's just the business side of things. So when when you bring it back into your home and your relationships um, back home, it, it's it's changed immensely. So um, yeah, my my mm-hmm. relationship and my marriage has probably never been better, you know, than the last six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing, amazing. They, they they say like there's a there's there's a natural universal law that for anything to like there needs to be a collapse. A collapse of the old for the for, for the new order to arise mm. and without that collapse first um we, we, we never we never evolve i know Th- thomas campbell calls it a lower it was a nasa physicist calls it a lowering of entropy creating order from disorder mm. so as this chaos and disorder we're actually working towards creating more orderly which obviously contributes to the the, the larger yeah. whole but um, it can feel pretty bumpy. Oh, it, it's <laughs> when, going when you're in the that. thick of it, 100. Yeah. percent And and obviously there was a fair bit of support with you guys, but it's that trust and surrender again. It's that opportunity at that point that you've you've either got to step into it and and embrace it, trust and surrender to whatever's going to happen, um, and not be attached to an outcome, um, which is that's that's probably the biggest one of the biggest lessons I've learned for you to be able to you know, allow, allow it to happen, allow the universe to do what it needs to do to actually align your soul, basically, because it's, if you resist it, and I'm starting to see now as I'm going deeper and deeper now, and I I spoke, spoke into that with you um, a few weeks ago is now when I resist it, I actually feel a bit physically ill, you know, I I can feel it coming up and I'm like, Mm. oh, hang on, you're, you're resisting that thing, don't. You know, like, and I've just got to tap into it and actually go with it, whether I feel comfortable or not. And um, my my wife actually just signed up to a course. I'll try and remember what it was she said, but um, the the facilitator said, if you're looking at the work and there's something that you're passionate about that's drawing you in, then do it. If there's something that you really don't want to do for whatever reason, you need to do it. And if there's something that's not really, that's in between there, just put it aside and if you come to it you come to it so it just comes back to that comfort band yeah so mm. it's and it's extremely important to follow the yeah. passion but when there's those uncomfortable things you've really got to strap on the boots and and sort of step in and and surrender let the let the universe do what it needs to do to to bring you out the other side absolutely it, it's it's like um the, the, it's so common because we're so externally focused you know we don't turn our senses inward and remove the the external input we, we we become very disconnected and disconnected from our bodies especially and and the signals and the sensory experiences that are actually screaming at you half the time but we we're, <laughs> we're just so far removed from it that we don't hear mm. it and we haven't developed a relationship with it we don't trust it um and 
we don't listen and you know we get ourselves into all sorts of problems and and i and i'm, and I'm sure you agree i'm a firm believer now that the the everything is conspiring to actually support you for your growth but if you're not listening it's going to smack you around eventually until you till you even if you're on your knees yep. <laughs> to go okay now i get yeah. it you know and then you have true context yeah. and that's look um yeah, yeah i'm probably blessed in that whoever was watching over me in that in that short moment in fiji actually put me on that direction you know um but it's not always the way a lot of people have to have that major event to actually bring them into this into line and, and start looking at this sort of work. Um, but yeah, I was, I was very fortunate in that, that aspect that I didn't have to go there. So, but you, you just touched on something before, Guy. Yeah, absolutely. yeah about, and, and I think that's, it's something to be said is you've, you've got to feel it. Um, when it's coming up, like I've had it where I've been driving to work. It's, I'm about half an hour drive down to northern New South Wales from uh, the Gold Coast where I live, and I've had emotion come up, and I'm like, "What is this?" You know, like it's it's coming up, and I'm like, "What is it?" And and the old me probably would have just pushed that away and just gone, "Oh, dude, chill out. What is that? Just forget about it, shake it off, and keep going." But now I go like, "Okay." let's feel this for what it is. And I've had a couple of episodes where I'm driving and I've had to actually pull over because the emotion got so much and I'm, I'm started crying and I'm breathing heavy and I'm just going, but I'm like, let it, let it be, let it do what it's got to do. Um, I find my space down at Corumban, um, flat rock down there where the rocks meet the sea. And it's the, you know, it's the lava flow from Malumban from Mount Warning. It's such a powerful thing. And, and when I go through that, mm-hmm. for me, I can pull over there. I can, I've generally got bare feet on my way to the office, but I'll, I'll walk out there and stand on those rocks and, and sit and breathe and actually feel it for what it is. Um, but it's so important that when those things are coming up that you, you, you let them through and you don't need to understand what it is, but you've got to feel it in every part of your being. So, yeah. Yeah, mm. don't, don't no. run, don't run. I'm curious, Wayne, um, on your journey, picking up your journey then, what led you to come to the retreat? Because I remember you had quite a few profound moments <laughs> during during those three days yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe start with those two questions first. Okay, before I go again. So how, how did I end up at the retreat? Um as I said, you guys started. You guys yeah. started advertising them, and it just never aligned. The first few, I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm not going to that. I'm not ready for it. Um, and then you kept advertising them, and then it got to a point where I was like, I need it. And the same thing, it just came through. It was like, I need that, and I booked it. And and I've got an understanding wife in Simone, and she said, yeah, if that's what you need, go do it. Um, but I suppose the biggest thing again was the drive out to that. It's such a powerful place at the base of Willumman there where you run the retreats at um, Gaimia. But, and I know how um, energetically powerful Northern New South Wales is as a whole in that, that little cauldron. Um, as mm-hmm. I was driving out there, it was just, I could just start it, felt it all starting to, you know, build up and this is going to be a big few days. And yeah, I, I knew once I got there, drove down the driveway, I was like, okay, complete surrender. This is it. So, um, and you know, your initial work that you do just to try and get an understanding and an intention, um, it just came through to me that uh, I thought it was, I am enough. But as I went through, it was like, I've, I've had enough. I've had enough of feeling like this and the, the whatever it is that's in me and, and I'm feeling this tug and this is even after the work, I've, I've just had enough. So I knew at that point that whatever was going to transpire over that three days was going to be interesting for for me and, and a massive growth phase. So, yeah. And then what was the second question? Sorry. Uh, You, well, I, you had some quite some. I remember there were key moments. Uh, I think I, I remember you coming out of my uh, meditation. I, I can't remember it was on one of the days or something. Just and you were like a rabbit in the headlights, mate, in a, in a positive way. Yeah, 
and I think you'd had uh, quite a show. Oh, mate, there was some experience like it's with that. A, and then, uh, do you mind just touching on them a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's some of it's a blur. I keep a journal, obviously, and and it's really good to be able to go back into that journal and have a look at it for for what it was and and how it actually transpired. Um, but as you guys take you through, like you, you lead into it, it's all it's all so organic. So each time we were stepping into a new practice or, or process, it was just like, oh, that's exactly what I needed now, you know. And and it, when I went into it, I, I was, yeah. I had this thing that um, any any sort of energy that came in to me or anyone's pain that I, I could feel, I just held it, you know. And then someone would walk walk in or someone would talk, and I'd, I'd start crying at the thing. I'm going, whoa, what is this, you know, like. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> then when you, when you start going through the processes, it, it, it's just like, okay, that, that just opened it, that just peeled a layer back, you know, and, and then you go into the next one oh, that just peeled another layer back. Um, and I had a, a good roommate in Rusty and we could really bounce things off each other. Um, so it was, you know, what was going on for me, I could actually really talk into it with him. He's quite a, um, enigmatic guy so <laughs> he understood everything i was sort of saying and and sort of was yes. able to go yeah okay that's that's awesome so and again that you know the universe put him in my room uh, he was the guy that i needed for that for that um journey but i suppose the probably the biggest one was uh, i it was in january so i'd done matt's full moon um new year soul vibe just before we came, first time I'd ever done one um, with the music and with the breathing. Oh, and wow. um, I was like, whoa, it was like, mate, it was, yeah, I'd, it's hard to explain. It's, uh, I've done some partying in my days and, and it was like going back to the party days, to be honest with you. <laughs> the whole body, the whole body vibe that I got, I'm like, oh, how good's this? And then we're at the retreat and without giving too much away, but that's, we're going into this. We know that we're about to go and do this process. And um, so I've got this idea on, oh, I can't wait for this. These, this feels awesome in the body, you know. So I'm sitting there ex with this expectation. And we, we did a little prep and sort of come into mm -hmm. heart coherence before it. And um, Annie, um, the beautiful soul that she is. Oh. And that was the life, that was the big change for me is as we're about to go in and lie down, she walked past and she said, you need to let go. You need to surrender through this. And, and for whatever reason, she was just walking past and she said that. And it was so profound at the time. And I get emotional about it now because had she not said that, it would have been a totally different journey. So went into it, no expectations, but then as things started to come up, it was like just surrender and let it go. And and what I what I went through, and you guys talk about you open the door, but it's up to you to actually step through that door. Um, that door opened for me. And knowing that same thing that you guys said and then what any had said to me on the way past, I stepped in. And when I did step in, oh, my, my, I can't even explain it. Um, in my meditations, I'd quite often try and go into my heart and it, and it felt black, you know, like that's, that's what it was. And I didn't understand what it was. I do, I do have a fair perception of what it was now. Um, but so it felt black, but in that moment, when I stepped through my heart just cracked open and just light and love. And, and it was just like, wow, this is, this is in me. You know, and it was in that moment that I was able to go. This, this is actually in me. You know, like and and uh, mate, I had I had loved ones in the past, and uh, I had a bit of a thing with my nan when she passed that I didn't actually um, contact her on a birthday and Christmas that year for the only time I ever had, and and she passed, and that sort of guilt and that shame sort of was sitting with me. Wow! And the beautiful soul that she is, I had her, and she come through and. And she hugged me, mate. And she hugged me the same way I felt that hug when she was here. And she was there, mate. I, I can't explain anything. She was there. And it was, this is it. Your heart's open. I'm, I'm out now. Like, I love you and I'm always with you, but your heart's open and you need to 
you need to go out and keep it open and, and follow this through. So that was the biggest part, the bit that really cracked me open, you know, and I got up out of that and I had no idea where I was. I had no bearings. I had, it was just, and that's probably the moment you're talking about the rabbit in the headlights, but I got walked outside to ground myself. I understand grounding a lot more now. I, I, I do it every morning, um, every afternoon, but mm-hmm. I had to ground myself. And even then, it was half an hour before I come down to lunch. I was, I was like, "What the hell was that?" You know, like no, not even trying to understand it, but I felt every bit of it. You know, and that's and for me, mate, that's it was a life changing moment. For make just making that choice to actually yeah. step in, and um, yeah, so I sat there at the dinner, at the lunch table with you, and you're like, "I know where you've been, mate. You don't need to speak." And I'm like, "I just looked at you. I can't, you know." So then the then the heart's open. So once that heart was open, and we, I think that's only on was that day two. I can't remember, guy, but we had a lot of work to do even after that. Yeah. So the next day we did a a regression meditation with Petra, you know, um, which took us back and she takes Mm -hmm. us through those, those different processes. Hope I'm not giving too much away here, mate, but, um, and through that I went to, I went. No, that's fine. Because. Yeah. It was, you know, I've had a blessed upbringing, um, loving parents mate all the opportunities that i've had like like through my life it's it's been fantastic but you just don't realize that there's emotional things that are in the background that get transferred to you whether you like it or not and you don't know they're there so when you go through those regression things and you're actually you're there things come up that you're like holy shit you know, like, whoa, now I understand why I feel that way when this happens. And now I understand why I feel that way when this happens. And and I, I won't go into the detail of that, but it's enough mm. to actually go, wow, there's there's so much that's been transferred to me, whether it's in, in this life, I believe now, whether it's in this life or a past life, it gets passed down through the generations and it's in you. And unless you can sit in this quiet, in this void, in this space and actually feel it, they you just don't, you just don't get to um, experience life to the full extent. So, but after that, after I did that one with Petra, I got up again on where am I, what's going on? And this, I had this ball of energy and anxiety in my gut and I'm, I'm like, oh, what is this? And everyone's sort of broke and they they went down to lunch. I'm like, I can't, I can't be around anyone and went up and sat up in the bush and just sat there and, I had a bit of a tug of war with what it was and I'm like, no more. You're you're the, you're the problem here. So we're gonna deal with this right now, me and you. And I just breathed and I could feel it coming up, oh, oh, like it was coming up. It just kept coming up and I'm like, I'm not going anywhere, we're gonna do this. And I'm tears coming out, mate. And I'm like and I just sat there and kept breathing through it until it came up and I let out a primordial roar that went through that valley and just collapsed like it was like someone just grabbed that thing that's in you that's tugging at you and that it just come out and it was gone and then from there now my heart's open my whole being's lighter um my life's different um i can look at relationships differently i can look at everything just from a very different place you know and and i discovered through one of the processes that it just came to me i can feel i feel everyone's emotion around me if they walk in a room i can feel it you know like and and my family or anyone i can just feel Mm. it but i never knew how to i feel it but i never knew how to let it go so in one of the meditations it actually came to me and it was like it's not your pain to hold so and that was that was early in the piece. It's not your pain to hold. And that just kept reiterating. And then when it actually started coming up after Petra's thing, it was like, it's not mine to hold. And I got rid of all of it at once. And now I can actually feel and know how to let it pass through me, you know, so I don't have to hold it anymore. It's a, it's a, yeah, a beautiful space to be able to hold the space, to feel it, 
and in every essence and every part of you, but then to allow it to flow through you and out, you know, if it's not yours. So, yeah. So they were a couple of the profound moments. <laughs> yeah. Incredible, yeah. man. So. Well, f- firstly, uh, thank you for sharing. I thought you, you articulated that amazing, man. You had me on the edge of my seat yeah. listening to that then. Um, I want to, I just want to highlight a couple of points for everyone listening because, um, it takes a huge amount of courage, first of all, to surrender into that, to, to really know what it means to, to be 100% all in, not 90%. Yeah. I might give it a go. Like, you, you know, heart and soul, I'm going for this. I'm all in. I'm just going to fucking let go, lay back and trust, you know? My my first experience, true true experience, was that was on my on my ayahuasca journey back in 2013, and I actually thought I was going to physically die before I drank it. My body was convulsing. Wow! I was that scared, and and then when you drink, there's there's, there's no going back. So I remember going, I'm in, I'm I'm in. All right, and then and actually knowing in every every cell in your body is in. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing yeah. this. You know what I mean, and and then it's it, it and it's from that I believe what 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 comes from that is an intent and an acknowledgement to something far greater than us, and and then there's a, a, a respect that's relationship that's built, and then then you're ready to 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 embody the wisdom that wants to come through and move whatever needs to move by that intent behind it. Mm. It's so powerful. And there's not many times in life we get those opportunities, I think. And all this work, all the daily practices, the silence, the quiet and the questioning, the, the feeding the mind, the feeding the body, feeding the soul, it leads us to these significant moments in time. And if we're willing to then surrender and fully trust, we then mm. fully understand it. And once we fully understand it, we can then take that wisdom and really start to uh, live from that place. Like you said, you, you start clearing the lens at which you've, um, mm. which you've been looking upon. And then you, st- you really start to see things differently and you understand the body more because it holds so much information. And the last thing I want to touch on was what mm. you said about your nan and that feeling, because the way I look at it is like we're, uh, if the, the universe is like an ocean, we're a drop of that ocean that's been like stuck in a jam jar or something, but we're still part of the ocean, but we're having our individual experience looking out through the jam jar instead. And this work allows us to merge back with the ocean for a moment to, to, to experience what we actually truly are anyway, mm-hmm. that's ever present with us, you know, and when you start to heal at that depth, it allows us then to say, go and live your life. You've got this life experience. You've got your jam jar, your vehicle to have your, you know, your, your physical aspect, mm. go and live it, you know, and, and allow yourself to, to, to do that and free yourself from, yeah. from those, that energy that's, that's stored in yeah. our body, that and information. It, we see it so oh, many times. Right? You see it, but it come, oh, comes back guy, to the, amazing. the number one thing in the, the um secrets of aboriginal healing willingness yeah so that willingness is the thing and it's, and it's yeah. deep willingness not just yeah i'm willing you know so but it's yeah it, it mate it it's it's not just it wasn't just nan you know like it's a it's it's a connection and you talked about it before as but you just of course, I, I, to yeah. be honest, and I've sat in meditations where, and this isn't, this isn't, oh yeah, I'm fixed now and this is all good. This is layers, yeah. So I still come up against stuff all the time. And after mm. leaving the retreat, I come up with some, against some of the biggest stuff that I had to, but I still do now. It's like a never, never ending gobstopper of Willy Wonka or something that you just think you get, and you get to the next flavor. What's the next flavor? You know, so it's, um, you just kill keep peeling those layers off but when it all comes down to it it's that connection where you actually go i'm not a particle anymore i'm the whole and it's like and that's what it feels like it's like you've stepped it's Mm -hmm. i'm not just a particle i'm not just a piece of the puzzle i am the whole 
And when you can feel that and you feel it with every part of your soul and every part of your being, I think the connectedness and everything that goes around it is that's what life's meant to be. And when we can step in and feel all of that, um, life's a very different thing, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. I got I to gotta ask you, I'd, I'd be interested in your perspective because um, the reason why I was key, I found, I found myself interviewing a lot yeah. of women on the podcast more recently. And, um, and you know, I was keen to, to get you on as well because I, I wanted a, yeah. a male perspective. And I kind of forget because I kind of, this is my world. I, I go out and I, I teach it. I'm, I'm running workshops and I, I kind of, I'm chatting to Matt you know, every bloody day, bloke to bloke. And we, we have a proper blokes chat and a laugh, but we're always talking about quantum or the work and diving in. And, and my world is like skewed yeah. <laughs> in some respects because I'm so passionate about this stuff, right? And it's my reality, which is which is totally fine. But then we get to Geelong uh, last Saturday. It was, almost, it was pretty much a sold out day, Geelong and Melbourne the next day. So we got in front of, I think, 140 people, until it's quite incredible, but two men turned up on the Saturday, and I think they were brought by their partners. and And I was like, "Is this because of our Facebook algorithm or something? Are we are we like just targeting females when we put the Facebook ads out there, or 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 or, or, or do us blokes just generally run a mile from this stuff and just think it's a lot of hippy dippy shit?" I, I wasn't sure, you know. Um, for any male that's listening to this, or even if they're listening because their wife has told them to, <laughs> it might be um, a possibility right now. But what would what would you speak to that? Because you you know, as far as I'm concerned, you, it, it's crucial for men to to embody this aspect of ourselves, and and I think it's where the greatest courage lies, and by incorporating our heart and our emotions and stepping into our, our our power from that aspect as well as the, mm. the physical aspect. I mean, what would you say to any man? You're shortchanging right yourself. Now? If you don't do it, you're shortchanging yourself. You, you're not living to the, the full extent that you can be, you know, and, and it's, it's not just for yourself, but it's for everyone around you. Um, family, friends, the community, mm -hmm. the world, whatever you want to put it, it's, you really need to be able to embrace it um, because it just changes the, the perspective or the, you know, that everyone has, you know, you, you just look at things differently. Um, it's, it's easy to say, but it's, you just, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's such a big thing. Um, but unless you want to, and you want to step into it, you just can't, you can't force anyone. And I've learned that, you know, I'm quite passionate about it, but there's only certain people I can have the conversation totally. with, you know, it's, uh, that's how it is. Uh, but yeah, coming on here guy, you know, like this was such a big challenge for me. You asked me to do this, what, 18 months ago after the retreat and it, I just couldn't do it. But this, <laughs> this time I, you know, <laughs> when you asked me, I, it, I was like, oh, I don't think I can do it. But then I, same as I said before, I start feeling physically ill. And it's like, yep, it's a yes then. So surrender time. Yeah. But it just opens so many different things that you don't get to experience. So it's like living, it's like, say your life was com compartmentalized. You're living in this quarter only, but there's another three quarters that you can be in, you know? So mm -hmm. why not, why not live the whole instead of just the quarter that you are at the moment? Why not just open that door and just see what it is, you know, see if there is something there. You know, um, and be vulnerable. You know, because it just it just changes how how people live around you. Um, so yeah, the more of it we could have, mate, the better this world will be. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. Well, I, I know as us as living flow over here, I, I certainly doing our best to to continue to get this work out in front of more people and that that are ready to step into yeah. it and 
Yeah, and look, uh, well, look, you know, I thank you, and it, it's so important. Sure. I've obviously continued working with you guys since since the retreat, um, the twelve week program. Um, I've been through once in full, and then just as a joining in with the other people that are coming through it, and it's such a an awesome community to be able to be amongst it and and to work work in and share space or, or hold space with those people that are coming through. Um, and you can share from the deepest level, you know, and it's so important to share. It's something that I'm, I'm passionate about and that's why I'm here because the more we can share our experiences, it just it may just tap into someone, you know, that, 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 that's going, I don't really want to talk about this, but uh, now that that person has, maybe I can, you know, and that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, no, thank you. Well, just on that, before I wrap this up, what do you think, what attracted you to do in the 12 weeks? Because obviously the retreat is a different experience to the 12-week program because we, we're yeah. connecting on a Zoom call every week and, and we're going through a weekly process as opposed to uh, an intense three or five um, nights. Probably the structure you know, of the... What did you oh, find the, the, best the structure, key the flower of flow that you yeah. guys have that we follow... Um, all the key areas as we work through that and we work in that for a week at a time um that structure allows you to actually delve directly into one thing that you you, you know you got the intention um and it's the community you know like it's actually being able to be there each week and and go look this has been coming up for me is and it's not about being normal i suppose but it's about sharing it and going the next person goes well that's what i'm feeling as well um when you do it on your own and I did the first stint of meditation on my own and it was great and I needed it. That was, that was my journey. Um, but it's that connection and that community is such a powerful tool. Um, yeah. And, and to go through it with a, a bunch of people that are at the same place you are with a different thing going on for them. It, it's so good. Yeah. And that was all these different things going on, but, everything touches into mm -hmm. what everyone else is going through. So yeah, it was just, it just felt right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, amazing. No, it's been yeah. amazing having you in there, mate. Honestly, you know, um, one, if somebody's still listening to this <laughs> on this podcast, that means they, they definitely either can, can relate to it or experience it or, or are ready to step into this work. Are there any last words of wisdom you would want to share to those people that are flirting with this idea? They might be terrified. They might be nervous. They might be genuinely excited. I don't, it's, I don't know. But what would you say? Yeah. We only get to do this once. Yeah. So we're here living this life. Why not? You know, like it's uh, why not? What do you got to lose? Um, there could be things going on inside of you that you just don't understand are there. That, that you, you're not aware they're there. Um, to step into something like this and, and just give it a crack, why not? You, you, you're only here for a, a short period. It could be gone tomorrow. Um, it could be. It can be a difficult journey at times, but I can tell you, out the other side, it's a totally different thing. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful place to be living from. So what do you got to lose by doing it? You're better off jumping in and, and have the opportunity to live a much better life than you do right now. And look, I, I had a good, I, I have a great life. You know, it was just, for me, it was just something that turned up. And, you know, I had a great life. Now it's even like it's next level. So it's, you know, and... You just work through these things and, and you do get to a better space for it. So why not? You know, what's the, what's the reason why not? I'll tell you what, actually, I'll tell you what most people that listening's reason will be, Guy, and they may not know it yet, is it's the scariest thing you'll ever do is to look inside yourself because it's the one place that we all have the ability to hide from. So to be able to look inside yourself and and work through things that might be in you it, it's it takes you to a whole other space that you you just you can't explain it you know but it is scary for some people but 
you will be better for it. So why not go have a go? Hmm. Exactly. Thank you. It's where the grace, greatest riches yeah. lie, yeah. I believe. Hundred percent. Period. Um, Wayne, I just, I just want to thank you, mate. Um, thank you for coming on the <laughs> podcast. Thank you for saying yes. Uh, thank you for all that you do, and uh, um, it's, it's greatly appreciated. And I guarantee you, thousands of people will listen to this over the next few months, and it'll have impact and and support somebody else on their journey as well. So. I'm excited to see um, where the, the next chapter of your life goes as well. So I'll be certainly mm. uh, keeping the popcorn yeah. handy and, and watching from the farm, mate. Eh? Yeah, and, uh, I'll certainly be digging deeper into this going. guy. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, being being able to stand. I thought it was just two mates having a chat. I didn't realise it was going out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's in, 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 all, in, all, in all honesty, <laughs> this is a big part of my journey to actually be able to sit here and speak to you guy um you know i'm a normal guy so it's 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 done amazing things for me and to be able to share that and and you know anyone who feels normal go and feel even even better you know that's it so thank you for allowing me the space to mm-hmm. actually come and have a chat and and share um from the deepest level um as i say this is just a couple of layers we can't fit much in in this this amount of time um but you can have these conversations and and if i can share this with more people as i move forward into my life and all the different layers that i've been able to peel off if that helps them just peel one more layer off then i hope it does i really do mm. i have no doubt thank you guys thanks much legend appreciated. much appreciated Thanks, mate.